Just one minute. Sir, I ask you to stay in the vehicle. No, no, no. I can get out of my own car. Sir, listen. No, 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 you no. Need... You listen to me. It's time for you to listen to me. In episode two, you watch this man's life just spiraling down. Pepper spray the man who's expressing his opinion under the First Amendment. He is living in the depression of, of a divorced man, <laughs> a man who doesn't have an anchor anymore in his life. His family was that, and now that's jeopardized. Why don't you get back on the horse and do what you do best? First step, talk to our friend and get cooking. He doesn't care about Walt at all. He pretends to, but he, uh, he cares about scoring big. I can't be the bad guy. I think Saul is looking for a big score, and I think he sees Walt as a chance to make millions. Walt's his uh, meal ticket, his lottery ticket, really. He's driving by the house, and he notices it's, it's for sale, and he tries to talk to his dad. You're selling the place in this market. Can you believe it? He realizes that they don't want anything to do with him, and he's gone past the point of trying to make amends, and so he thinks about it, and he's like, you know what, this, this is my house. You want a job? A job? Who's got a job for me? I do. He realizes Jesse's important to Walt, and if he can score a point there, he'll score a point. And plus, it's fun to do. 400000 That's my final offer. Well, this is a waste of time. Did you possibly <laughs> imagine that we would entertain this? Come on, honey. I don't know. I just thought some allowance was in order once I heard about the meth lab. Saul is just such a backstabbing, like, just dirty lawyer that we all know and love. And uh, he gets his house back. Blackmail. It works all the time. The new owners are expected at any moment. Where do you think you're going? Inside. I bought the place. I just wish I had you back full time. You two brighten up the place. The whole Ted thing, there's a little history between them of some sort. He maybe tried to steal a kiss at a Christmas party kind of thing. And there's an obvious attraction there. Um, and he's a really nice man. He's a good man who's doing a somewhat shady thing in his business. I can't sign it as it currently exists. Fair enough. But she needs the job, and she chooses to overlook at one of her Breaking Bad moments in there. And I think that she goes towards Ted because Walt's putting her in the position of being the bad guy for her children when all she's really trying to do is protect her children. I think she feels so trapped. Mmm. Uh, a pizza. <laughs> well, I'm making dinner. He keeps trying to work his way back in to in the good graces of, of Skyler, and it's just not working. So there's the conflict. Everything that Skyler has done thus far seems to be antithetical to what Walt wants in his new quest. It dawns on him in this episode that if his wife is going to play hardball, he's going to play hardball right back, and he's going to move back into his own house. It's a move born of desperation and sadness. No. This is the episode in which uh, the cousins who we've established as being very hardcore, badass dudes who very much want Walt dead, show up at his house with a shiny steel fire ax. This is the kind of tension born of the audience knowing something that the protagonist does not. Little does he realize that two of the badassest dudes ever are sitting on the edge of his bed right outside the door of the bathroom. Just by uh, dumb luck, and the intervention of Mike, the private eye who's out front, who's been planting bugs in Walt's house. Walt gets uh, saved at the very last second. Gus sends these two guys a text message telling them in one word, Poyos, to hold off. And uh, they do, luckily for Walt, and Walt never even knows they were ever there. <laughs>